Hey guys, I'm Callie Lewis. And I am John P. On today's Geek Beat Live, brain simulating supercomputers. Super Bowl successes and failures. Diamond encrusted headlights. Gangnam Style Baby. And a special Google guest star. It all begins now. <laughs> Welcome to Geek Beat Live. That's John P. That's Callie Lewis. We are excited to be here. I hope you guys are. Another day, another dollar. Last week I wasn't feeling so well. I'm feeling a lot better today. We're still coughing and we're still like getting over stuff, but feeling a lot better. I won't be like miserable the entire time. You know, the thing about it is <laughs> I don't actually, I don't really get sick very often. No. But well, you get allergies. I get allergies. You don't get sick sick. Yeah, I don't get sick. Like I could cough all over you when yeah. I'm sick and you're not going to get sick. Probably wouldn't happen. But uh, what I don't like about being sick, whether it's allergies or otherwise, is the coughing. I don't mind like feeling run down. That doesn't bother me. It's the coughing. Because you feel run down all the time? I guess You're probably, used to it's it. probably, but you know, of the candy hey, that you eat on a daily basis. That does not. That helps me. That helps me. It doesn't make me run down. <laughs> I have a question for you guys. Do you ever cough so hard you pull muscles in your neck? <laughs> Is that yeah. what you did to your uh, neck? I do that all the time. Like that's what I. <laughs> excuse me. That's what I don't like about coughing. Is nice. I cough and I pull muscles oh. in my neck when I cough. Well, I think you're uh, maybe maybe you're just a little old. Oh, <laughs> There's no little about it. Here comes the old jokes. Oh, oh man! Geez. See, I'm not the only one. Other oh. people say they do the same in thing. Impressive. So when I cough, it just hurts like all up and down here. You your know, chest? like my my entire chest is in pain. No, my chest. I don't feel a thing. It's my neck. It's all oh. up in here. I guess it's because I'm like. Ugh. Uh, joke, <laughs> cough. I don't know. I don't know. Well, so we we have actually a pretty exciting um, show for you today. We have all sorts of fun stuff to talk about, and we have a special guest on here in a we bit. We do, Moritz. Yes. So we are going to be talking to him. He is actually from Google. He he develops for Google Hangout stuff. And you all guys know how we love our gonna, Google. Exactly. We are going to be talking all about that later. You know, a big thing, talking about Google, a big thing that happened this week was YouTube announced that they are doing, uh, they're about to uh, send out a new layout format for all the channels. Um, come up on the 20th is when people will start getting the ability to, and then like a month later, it'll actually be, uh, it'll be forced upon you. So for like a month you have a while to <coughs> choose whether you want the old layout or the new layout, and then later... Uh, you will have no choice, <laughs> but they, they always do that. <laughs> when are we going to get ours done? Well, we are hoping that here in the next couple of days, we are actually going to be get able some to special, move over. We got some help from a special friend, we didn't we? We did. We did indeed. Um, I, I, Justine, actually, has been helping us out quite a bit. So thanks, thanks to Justine. her. She is an awesome woman. And uh, But there have been some back-end issues with that. So anyway, we're hopefully in the next couple of days, you're going to see uh, some layout changes. So look forward to that, and just let us know if you see any problems or issues. Speaking of layout changes, today I'm trying to run the show off of a Mac Mini. That is not a Mac Mini. I mean an iPad <laughs> Mini. You always call it a Mac Mini. <laughs> I mean an iPad Mini. I just got an iPad Mini. You know why I bought the iPad Mini? Um, because you have to have every gadget that you do not have. Well, it would be the perfect compliment to that, your little case. Right. <laughs> yeah, I actually, did. actually, I think that's why. You got this case. You unboxed it last week. We unboxed. And you were like, I need an iPad mini. <laughs> well, we unboxed this little iPad mini case from Marware. And when I opened it up on the show last week, I thought, oh, that's pretty cool because yeah. it did that. And then it did this. And then it has a little handle right here. Well, you're going to you do know a what I didn't, on that. You know what I didn't know before? It rotates. Look at this. It rotates. That is pretty awesome. Okay, so uh, a couple... So that's why I decided to buy an iPad mini. I kid you not. Marware, it's your fault that I bought an iPad mini. <laughs> 
So, uh, you guys, if you want to uh, pay attention as we're going along with this show, you can go to geekbeat.tv slash live 80... Seven, 80 what? 87. Live 87. <laughs> I have to look at my cheat sheet over here. And be sure to check in on Get Glue at keepy.tv slash glue check in. All right, we're going to head off to commercial break. We'll be right back right after this. Hello, folks. Welcome back to Geek Beat Live. We are having a good day. It's Friday, and we're happy to be with you guys. As we usual, that commercial break, which you guys saw is maybe like two minutes. It was like 20 minutes on this end because we were just chatting it up. Going off, chatting the chat room up. All and, that. Uh, yeah, so if Anytime you're... you want to join, you can always watch uh, on Fridays at 3 o'clock Central. If you go to geekbeat.tv forward slash live, you can participate in the live chats. You know, I try and give the time zone in like Eastern or Pacific, which everybody's used to. But... I give it in Texas time. <laughs> you always are like... Because I'm a Texan. It's Central. That's what it is for us. So that's what everybody else here's needs Texas, to do. Like, but, but here's Texas. But a lot of the rest people of the world. aren't Texas, used to, world. to calculating the time zone difference between Central and anywhere they are. Anyway. Okay, 4 o'clock Eastern. Come join us. Speaking it's, of timing, I don't, that, that is a horrible transition. Speaking of time zones, Sunday, it's time for the news. Sunday was uh, the Super Bowl, and people are still talking about the Super Bowl. This um, was a good Super Bowl. The, well, I didn't actually watch it. I was sick and drugged up and sleeping, but I was paying attention to news and Twitter all the while. You I could tell not. it was a great Super Bowl just yeah. from Twitter alone. I mean, the power have. went out, for goodness sakes. That's true. The power did go out, and it got <laughs> tweeted about. The Super Bowl was actually great. For those of you who are not, you know, Americans who uh, didn't get to watch it, I will tell you it was sometimes when you have a Super Bowl uh, game, just like any big sporting event, sometimes it's a blowout. Like, one team just runs all over the other, and it's not. It's just not even fun to watch. This was not one of those. This game... It went right down to like the last few plays. It, it was anybody's game. So it was really close. Yeah. It was a great game. Um, however, it wasn't so great for Super Bowl commercials, I didn't think. But no. anyway, it was great for streaming because... Record-breaking. Unbelievable. Six, I mean, sorry, three million viewers watched the the Super Bowl <laughs> on a streaming service. I was one uh, of them. CBSSports.com. This is up 43% from last year. And uh, there was like 114.4 million streamed minutes, if you well, want to calculate it that way. Right before the Super Bowl, I was sitting around going, I don't know how I'm going to watch it because I don't have cable or anything. I'm a cord cutter. And then Ben came to the yeah. rescue and gave me the link to watch it online. I was like, yes. So I put mine on my iPad and connected it to the Apple TV and yeah, then and put, put it, it up, up on, on the, the big, big screen. The 80 inch screen that you have. Hey, it worked great. That's awesome. It was awesome. And also, it was the first year that the Super Bowl streamed the halftime That's show. That's true. And so everybody got to see that. Who was playing Although the halftime? Although nobody cared. Who cared? It was, it was what's her name? Um, the hot chick. Uh, it was Beyonce? Oh, I yeah, thought it was, it was Beyonce. What's her name? Rihanna? No, not Rihanna. Beyonce. Oh. Beyonce. Isn't she the one that goes, all the super ladies, oh, or something, I don't know. Yes. All the whatever. Put a ring on Put it. Put a ring on it. She's that one, right? I didn't watch the halftime show, sorry. You didn't miss anything. I don't care. All right, so Super Bowl ads, you actually mentioned that super it was ads. a bad, bad year for Super Bowl ads. Not Everyone was like, oh, this is a, this, all these commercials suck. Not um, all of them. Not all of them. Now, the one commercial that is still being talked about everywhere is GoDaddy. So, Obviously, they did something right again. Where are you hanging out? Did we see that one? I don't remember that oh, one. Oh, God. You didn't hear about oh, that Oh, yeah. One? The one with the nerdy guy who got kissed by the hot chick. Would you have She's done like that commercial? She's a supermodel. She's a supermodel Yeah, or she something. was. If they had asked you to kiss him on that commercial, would you have done it? Sure. Depends on how much they pay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. You guys heard it. You heard it here. How much do you want to pay to kiss Callie Lewis <laughs> on gonna TV? You're going to start that. <laughs> I'm going to be your broker. Oh, okay. I, I will. I have oh, a very okay. reasonable percentage. Okay, got it. That got I will it. Take, so. <laughs> you made me blush. Okay. Okay. So uh, also Twitter. I mentioned Twitter. Uh, it kind of dominated the Super Bowl commercials. Kind of. So yeah. Well, uh, what was it? Fifty-two Super Bowl ads mentioned 
No, wait, I'm, I'm sorry. 47 of the 52. 47 of the 52 mentioned Twitter in the commercial itself. Only four mentioned Facebook. Which is a complete reversal from last year. And, of course, none mentioned Google+, Plus, which... What's up with that? We just learned recently, of course, that is Google+, Plus is now the second biggest of all of the uh, social media platforms, so... It's because you know, companies are still trying to figure it all out. It's because they're always way behind. Yeah. I mean, two, two years ago, we were telling companies, you've got to be on Twitter. And then, like, uh, you know, Twitter's still big. Don't get me wrong. I like Twitter and all that. But now we, we're telling people, you've got to be on Google+. Plus. <laughs> It'll Two years from now, we'll see them say something about Google+. Plus. Yeah. You know, what can you say? All right, so on to other news outside of the Super Bowl. Uh, Dell has chosen to go away from being pr public and go private instead. Yeah, they're going to go That buy, doesn't happen very often, does all their, it? It almost never happens. In big, big companies, it wow. almost never happens. So I don't even know what to say about that, but that's coming down the pike. So Interesting. And we also, shall see. Uh, Redbox Instant Streaming has, is coming to the Xbox. So if you have an Xbox, now you can now view your instant streaming Redbox stuff on the Xbox. Well, that's good, because last week I was complaining about the fact that I had gotten access to the thing, but and I couldn't, couldn't play it on my TV it. or anything. Exactly. But I still want them to fix the AirPlay thing on the app. Right. So we'll see. All right, All right, well, we're going to head off to commercial break. And when we come back, we have a very special guest with us. So be prepared for that and send in your questions on the chat room. We're paying attention. True. Also, uh, we want to know what your favorite Super Bowl commercial was. So leave us a fame spot by going to geekme.tv forward slash fame spot. You know, I want a diamond encrusted Drobo. You think they'll do that for me? <laughs> they might. You're Kelly Lewis. <laughs> How much do you think I have to pay? Uh, for you, free. <laughs> we do have a lot of Drobos over there that we're, we're uh, storing all of our shows on the Drobos. Exactly. And of course, Drobo is still sponsoring GeekBeat. Which, thank you, Drobo, for doing that. Thank you to our friends at Drobo. Do you guys have a Drobo? If you don't have a Drobo yet, you need one. We've named our Drobos. We, they're like, they're like p a family member to us. They literally Santana. are. Santana. Uh-huh. I don't know. <laughs> They're not that bad. <laughs> I don't know the names. Einstein. Einstein. <laughs> they're, like, they're like a family member that we don't see very often. I don't. The thing is, the Drobos just work, so I don't really have to pay that much attention to them. We've named, nicknamed our, we named our <laughs> Drobos after Mexicans. Tito. Because Norm was involved. Because Norm was here. Tito, Santana. <laughs> What's our other one? Einstein isn't. Mexican? We went to Will yep. Ferrell and we named it Burgundy. Oh, yeah, that's Burgundy, right. Burgundy, that's right. And Burgundy. Tito, so. Santana, and that's Burgundy. Nice. I made it uh, Einstein. Yeah, but then Dave, Dave named our Drobo FS Einstein. Yeah. But then we just replaced What's the, the 1200? We just replaced, we haven't named him yet. Oh, so it's open, up for grabs. That's what it. do you guys want the B1200i to be called? What should we name the biggest Drobo in our network? We are now. Andre the Giant. Andre. <laughs> you what? Gotta, here's the deal. You gotta, you've gotta tweet it at us. Yes, tweet Don't us. Don't tell us now. You have to tweet it either at yes. Callie Lewis or at John Pose. Tweet us what would what would what should we name the biggest Drobo we own? And use the hashtag Drobo. So you know hashtag call Drobo. the Drobo. Name this. it. Name it. Name it. Blah blah. Tweet it at us. Yep. Jeffrey. <laughs> Whoever has the best one, we're gonna name it that. But you gotta come up with a good one. Welcome back to Geek Beat Live. I'm Callie Lewis. I'm John P. And guess who we have today with us? Moritz. <laughs> Moritz Talksdorf. You actually might know him from such things as... Google Plus. <laughs> Google Plus, uh, lower third, <laughs> volume control, toolbox, uh, hangout graphics, cheer on. He does all sorts of cool stuff. Here's Hi. the deal. If you like to do hangouts... He is your man because he is the one who's created all kinds of things to spice him up. So yes, let's so get him. Got... Let's let's bring him here. Let's, there he Morris. is. Hey, Morris, what's happening? Hey, John. Hey, Kelly. Uh, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. We actually met you at South by Southwest last year. 
That was and in Austin, Texas. Exactly. But where are in you the pouring now? Pouring rain. <laughs> yes. It was pouring rain. But where where do you live? Uh, I'm still in Essen, Germany, though. Um, but I will be moving in uh, about two weeks on the 21st. Oh. Over and where are you Dublin. moving to? Dublin, Ireland. Why? Ireland. He likes golf, maybe. <laughs> well, not that much. <laughs> no, not that much. No. <laughs> so what, 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 what bring, brings what's you? Gonna, yeah, what's <laughs> what? <laughs> What's going to bring you to Ireland? Um, actually, Google. Okay. So uh, you're going to. It was a nice uh, early Christmas gift last year um, when I got my, my contract. So, awesome. yeah, you, you've been developing the stuff for, you know, or you've been doing all this uh, Hangout stuff, um, but you, you did not work for them, even though people thought you did. <laughs> but now yeah, it's official. It. Um, yes, I will work for Google, but not in the development field. So uh, you mentioned in the show before that um, I developed those apps for Google. Actually, that's not the fact. I developed that in my private time. Right. Um, just because I love Hangouts. Uh, only exception was Chiron that was developed for Google for okay. the Olympic Games in London. Um, but I will do, or I will be part from the ConOps uh, Consumer Operations Team in Dublin which is basically user support and a bit of community management, um, focus on uh, the German market on Germany. Oh, nice, awesome. Nice, Well, that's fun because uh, I'm just, I'm just going to assume that you became visible to the Google uh, folks because of all the stuff you've been doing in, yeah. in the Google Plus community, and uh, then that turned into a full-time gig for you. Yeah, kind of. I mean, <laughs> I was pretty active in the help forums and in the uh, official product forums. Um, as a top contributor, um, where users are helping users, and the top contributors are some sort of knowledgeable users, which have um, some connection with the um, com um, community managers and the ConOps team. And uh, that's probably where I got some more attention from the community, community management team, um, because I provided some helpful um, um, posts there to help other users. And I think that's all what happened last year altogether. Um, brought me this job in the, in the end. Awesome. So, so since you're so involved in the community and with Hangouts and you see what people are doing, what things do people not know that they can do with Google Hangouts, for instance? Um, I see a lot of um, great live shows already. Um, like we have Dan McDermott's Google Plus Week, which uh, will happen tonight as well. Um, and, and I mean, you are quite utilizing um, YouTube Live already and, and Hangouts in the show. And yeah. Sarah Hill was one of the, the biggest um, persons um, using Hangouts during her live show as well, from the, straight from the beginning. And I think this is a cool way, and, and I hope to see more of, of um, such things in the, in the future, outside of the U.S. especially. <laughs> That's true. Yes, right, definitely. Focus on the US right now. What what kinds of th things are you seeing in you know Dublin or or where Germany you are now, or... Germany? Um, you know, is it is it very different the way people are accessing it? Or is the adoption uh, just slower? I mean, are, are people are people really getting involved in Google Plus yet? There. Um, yeah, they they're using Google Plus, but um, the the thing with live Hangouts is a bit difficult over here in Germany. Um, so I think Hangouts as a regular um, tool is used quite quite good, but the live feature starts to grow now. It, it's mm -hmm. I think as as John said, it's it, the adoption just takes a while. Yeah. And um, there was one TV show they did a special um, episode for the end of the world last year, and they integrated Hangouts into their show, which wasn't the perfect best way, but it was kind of good and it was a start and. Um, more and more users are trying to do live shows, um, but there are some law issues over here in Germany that, that requires a broadcasting license and whatnot. So it's still a bit difficult, and users trying to figure out the best way to do it. Wait, you mean people, in order to do a live show, like from their bedroom, that they might be subject to some kind of a law that that would restrict that? Yes. Wow. How? <laughs> like, what? What exactly is the law? You can't. You can't be well, a broadcaster, broadcaster without a license. The, the law says that if you're technically be able to reach more than 500 users, which is the case when you're doing it yeah. with the Hangouts on Air, um, it's required to have a license. But then on the other hand, the Hangouts on Air is a bit of a different medium. It's not like 
real TV broadcasting. It's more like video blogging or podcasting or something like that. Um, so the, the the politicians are not quite sure yet, like <laughs> yeah. how, where where to put it. But yeah. people people are aware and and a bit of cautions like. Am I really allowed to or not? So yeah. the best way is to, to reach out to your local um, agency and ask them if, if for your project it is required to have a license or not. And in some areas here they said, you know, for what, what you're doing you don't need a license. Um, but it's still an issue and that's, I think, why people are, are not really up to, to doing Hangout on Air. That makes sense. Well, you know, a lot of people, you know, you mentioned, for example, the way we're doing it and the way some of the other, uh, I guess, would call them bigger, you know, like shows are doing it. For us, we've got an awful lot of infrastructure. We've got, yeah. you know, lots of staff. We've got lots of equipment. And uh, it's just not feasible. People, you know, people are seeing our lower thirds on here and right. and fancy stuff going on, but but there's like hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of infrastructure making it occur. Not everyone can do that. Except can you, they can. Yeah, can you tell us about some of the tools that you've developed that could help people spice up their Hangouts when they do them? Sure. Um, so my, the, the idea grew when uh, I first hung out with uh, Sarah Hill during her newscast. And I was like, hey, I'm on a news show, so I want to have like some sort of lower third thingy. Mm -hmm to show who I am, where yeah. I'm from, probably, probably to put a link, link in there. Promote yourself. Right. And uh, at this point, I was only able to use external software um, to do that. So I created the website hangoutgraphics.com where users were able to create their own lower third and put it on with external software. Yeah. Um, but then Google released the Hangouts API, which gave me the ability to create Hangout applications which are able to run within the Hangout and to display overlays. It took a while until it was really able to, to put an overlay which is static and stuff. So at first we had like a wiggling lower third which tracks your head motion, which was a bit weird. But um, <laughs> after a while and some discussion with the uh, API development team from Google, they included that option in the API and I was able to you know, put some fancy um, lower thirds on the screen. And uh, this became very, very handy for Hangouts on Air and allows a, just a common user to have a professional look in their video. Can you We're show us, by the way, we, Dave, can comments. you take the, take it off and let's, can you pull up one on your end and show us what it looks like? Yeah, sure. Just give me a second. To so kind of walk here. us through what you're doing. How does it work, like from a user's perspective? Um, yeah, you basically just open the Hangout toolbox. Uh, if you haven't loaded it up before, you can uh, click in the Hangout to add apps, and it will show up in the app picker where it is uh, mm -hmm. uh, listed. So it's a featured app, and you can just add it and give it permission. And once it loaded, you will see like a, a panel on the right side. I, I don't know if, if uh, screen we're share actually will work we're here. watching it. The guys are showing it yep. right now while you're talking about it. Okay. Um, so once you opened up the Hangout toolbox. Um, you will see on the right side um, the panel from the Hangout Toolbox, which is just the information screen, which gives you um, some information about like what apps are in the Hangout Toolbox and who was part of the development team and all this stuff. Yeah, you have to at first, um, I just see it on your screen, to uh, <laughs> this first run message away, which just says that the uh, your local video is mirrored. And if you see any text, uh, they appear backwards to you, which is totally fine. Okay. So and then you have the tabs um, on top, which um, are the, the different apps. So at first you have the Hangout lower third, uh, then you have volume control, um, the meme faces, some sounds you can play, like some applause. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, another cool app, which I recently added, which was developed by Gervin Sturm from Austria, uh, the comment tracker, which is an awesome app, which allows you to, to track all comments from different sources. I mean, if you're doing a Hangout on Air, and I mean, you experience the same during your live show, keeping track of all the chat rooms yes. and comments on different we're, places. We're currently watching three different chat rooms. So. <laughs> yeah. right. so, and when you do a Hangout on Air, you, you try to focus on the Hangout itself and, you know, to, to interact with the people in the Hangout, but you also want to keep track of the comments, and that's why Gavin and Vendor developed the Hangout comment record, where you can add that's a Google awesome. Plus post, a YouTube video, search for Twitter hashtag, or even search Google Plus for a post, and then it will um, put all the comments into one stream within the Hangout, and you can 
also display them um, on your screen so the audience can actually um, see the comments and you can read them, read them out and you can cool. interact with the comments made um, on the different uh, websites, which cool. is pretty cool. So really, you, you guys have made it you know, uh, possible for anyone to not only have an audience, but kind of look like a TV station, too. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah, so, and uh, back to the lower third. Um, oh, yeah. I can show you whoa, wait, uh, how it looks like. Just have to grab my lower third. Where is it? There it is. So this is how it would look like. This awesome. is a custom. This is a custom-made one. Okay. Um, so you can create your own very own style in the lower third. It's just a transparent PNG graphic in 640 by 360, and then you can arrange all the parts um, on this um, space to to have some sort of overlay. You can also add elements in the top, like your logo like you see it on TV stations or whatever. Cool. And the very basic one, if you don't have like the tools to, to build that um, overlay, you can just um, use the upper part of the app and just switch it on. It all automatically has your name in it, grabbing it from Google+. And then you can also um, enter some sort of um, tagline where you can put in your location, your website, or whatever. And you can also add a logo or um, a country flag. Nice. nice. So, yeah, actually, uh, people in the chat room were, were calling for you to do that. <laughs> and, and Yana actually says that Moritz is the bee's knees. Nice. <laughs> Which you are. But if uh, people want to be able to take advantage of this stuff, the best place to find that all of that is your About page on your Google Plus page, correct? Right. OK, so you can go to google.com slash plus Moritz Talksdorf. Right there, always, right there, right there, right there. We have it all <laughs> <laughs> on the lower third. On the lower third. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us and kind of giving us a preview of all of that. And uh, if people want to follow you, they can find out more and talk to you directly. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, uh, especially because I know it's a lot later in the evening yes. there than it Are is here. Yes. Are we keeping for... you up? <laughs> no, it's ten. 40 years. Oh, okay. That's not too bad. <laughs> it's just party time. It's time to go to the pub and get a beer now. So. Right. <laughs> All right, Moritz. Well, thanks for joining Thank us. You. We'll chat thanks with you soon. Me. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, He's guys. Awesome. I just love his smile. Uh, he has got an awesome smile, and I know you love his accent, too. Of so, uh, you guys stay tuned. We're going to be right back after this break with more Geek Me Live. Welcome to Geek Beat Live. Today is Friday and we are having a good day. There was a lot of coughing during that last commercial oh, break. Oh, poor you. I don't know. What is the deal with taking cough medicine and it doesn't do anything for you? Uh, maybe you should just not take any medicine. Actually, maybe the cough medicine was exactly what it sounds like. It's medicine that makes you cough. Maybe it maybe was. I shouldn't have maybe taken you it. shouldn't have taken it I, at all. <laughs> I wasn't coughing so much before I took the cough medicine. Well, it's also you're talking a lot, so that irritates your throat. Mark Ramsey says I need more purple drink. <laughs> well, I don't even know what that means. Purple drink. Should I? Sure, you need some purple drink. Okay. All right. Well, I it think is, it's web time. It is web time. Today we have we have some web stories. We have a blimp. The first one. We have a Lego blimp. I gotta admit, this story, I'm not sure. I can't decide if this is cool or lame, folks. What are you talking about? I, I, honestly, How I, would it be lame? I'm trying to decide. It's Lego. Okay, here's what happened. There was a guy named Tyler Westmoreland, two guys, Tyler Westmoreland and also Chris Shepard. They built this thing. Basically, it is a bunch of uh, Legos from a Mindstorm kit. You know, that thing I showed you from CES yes. that created the Cobra? That kind of kit. That's right. So that what they did was they strapped it together and then they attached two 55-inch balloons, presumably filled with some kind of material like helium. They didn't say that in the specifications. Could have been nitrogen. <laughs> could have been hydrogen, like the Hindenburg. Anyway, uh, so they created this, this little... Helicopter? Balloonicopter. We're calling it a balloonicopter. <laughs> and it's all remote controlled and stuff. And they wrote the source code in Robot C. Yep. And they open sourced it. Okay. So, what well, does that mean? 
That means you I can go, build your own. Exactly. Which is pretty awesome. How can that be lame? But if you don't, if you find that lame, then I've got something that I don't think you'll find lame. Okay. What's okay, that? Okay. So, uh, obviously, you know Gangnam Style, the video, right? Everybody knows it by now. Well, this, take a look at this popular video. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> so this kid was totally, <laughs> totally was like asleep. <laughs> it didn't matter what music they played. It didn't matter at all until Gangnam Style started. He's like, ah. I think the best thing is look at his sister. Uh huh. The sister's so funny. She's like she's what, like, like three? And yeah. look, she's crying. Uh -huh. she's, she thinks she's it's laughing so funny. So hard. That kid. Hey, can you restart that, Kim? Go back to the very, very beginning. I want to see the very beginning of that one again. Here, watch this. Look at this again. The kid is out. I mean, it's like, what was that, a one second delay? I know, it was like right on cue. That was awesome. Okay, I think we also have another Gangnam Style video. Do we? We have another one? I do think we have another okay, one. Okay, let's see it. Take a look. Let's see it. <laughs> How old is this kid? Like, I don't know, but he kind of looks two, like Sai. A year and a half, too. You gotta admit, he looks like Sai. <laughs> hey, I guess he's watching the video. All right. You know what I've noticed? Uh, we were at a conference, CES. Every booth was playing Gangnam Style. You it know, just doesn't stop. It's amazing. And here what? we are contributing to it. You know what I just thought of? What? I've not yet purchased the Gangnam Style. Uh, a single. I need to buy that so that I can play it when we're driving around in the car. No. Yeah, you'd love it. No. I promise. Let's move on to science. <laughs> All right. So uh, we actually got an interesting uh, there. So in Antarctica, right? Um, temperatures they rarely above freezing in the summer. It's not like, exactly warm there. Folks. In the winter, it's like below seventy. It's a cold place with a lot of ice and a lot of snow. Not right? below seventy. It's seventy below. Zero. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's, I mean, you know, for us, since we're from Texas, if it's below 70, it's right, cold. Right, it's like 60. But there, it's 70 below. negative 70. <laughs> um, all right, so they, they went and all of these um, stations that are studying the, the space, the animals, blah, blah, everything, they keep getting destroyed because the ice keeps coming up, Moving snow keeps getting there, and uh -huh. everything's being destroyed. So they built this thing. It is the Haley Six Antarctic Station. So it's raised up. It has eight modular little um, things there, and some of them, like, like the red one, is the dining hall and uh, the communal relaxation area, and then the blue ones are all like. Uh, 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 where they sleep. It's like a train. It is like a it's train. It's like a train in so, the Antarctic. They strap these things together. You can walk from one to the other, but the coolest thing is they're all on legs. So as the snow builds up, they just jack it up. Yep, they, they just, just keep jacking it raise up, it jacking up. it up. And they could, you know, move it fairly easily and everything, which is in pretty fact, cool. In fact, it is the world's only fully mobile Research station. Yes. Actually, they're, uh, they're saying in the chat room they need these in uh, New Orleans and Galveston. They do. Which would be very true. I need one of these. <laughs> this holds a research crew of 70 people. But in the winter, they trim it down to about 16. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So another cool thing. I, I don't know if you read my post last night on Twitter and Google+. Plus. Yeah. Uh, I was asked. I, was, I, I just keep thinking it's quite funny how we, our human brains... They are the smartest computers in the world. Uh -huh. We cannot figure out how our human brains work. But uh, we have a European researchers who are working to build a supercomputer to simulate the human brain so they can figure it out even more than we already have. Yeah, that's a great idea. They're going to spend a billion dollars in order to make a gigantic computer brain 
that will ultimately take over the whole world. I mean, that's great. This is Skynet version one. They're gonna figure out brain issues like depression, memory problems, all sorts of cool stuff. And how to control Terminator robots. Oh, please. You, you, you and your Speaking Skynet. of robots, we'll be right back after this commercial break to talk about robots. Yay! Robots, robots! It's your favorite time of the <laughs> day. Go ahead with the robot stories. It's actually pretty cool and useful. Oh, so okay. the British Ministry has agreed they are going to buy 160 of these. These Black Hornet mini helicopter drones. I like Black Take a look at these. Helicopter drones. These are, I mean, look how tiny they are. So what's the, how they're being used? They're like four inches by one inch. They can record full motion video and still pictures. So basically, soldiers are sending these across, like a, you know, around a barrier or in a, an area that they don't want to go to just yet before they make sure it's okay. And hopefully these things are so small that people won't really notice them. <laughs> or they right? can't shoot them out of the air. Or they can't shoot them easily. Um, and so then that, that information is being sent back to the soldiers, like, and and then soldiers can know whether it's safe to go in or not. That's kind of cool. I it like is. that. It is. They're being uh, deployed right now to Afghanistan. That probably should have been in my segment, Trains, Planes, and Automobiles. How? Because it's a flying helicopter. True. You stole my segment. Okay. Well, how about this one? Okay. <laughs> um, moths driving robots. Moths driving robots? Indeed. Uh, scientists at the University of Tokyo are cre have created a robot that is being driven by the moth. So they sit the moth on that little ball that you saw. Uh -huh. And with its um, with its senses, like it's it's using smell uh -huh. to drive the robot to you know avoid obstacles and to go into a specific area. Uh -huh. They're going to be using these um, to like learn um, uh, spills and leaks and uh -huh. stuff. Uh, apparently, something about the moths. Oh, they senses smell it. Can smell it in and such a manner. They go find them. That, yeah. So what you're telling me is. They were looking to give robots a brain, and the best they could do was a moth-sized brain. <laughs> For this particular purpose. Now, here's what I can't quite figure out, like how they're attaching the moth to it. When they did this with cockroaches, because they did this as well <laughs> with cockroaches, that? they velcroed the cockroach to the robots. And then they stuck metal things into its Well, that's its something head. different. That's oh. something completely different. Oh, okay. But this particular experiment was done with cockroaches and velcroed like onto the back. Remember anyway, that one? Remember I don't know how they were doing that with the moth. Remember that one we sh we saw where they super glued the, the, the yes. cockroach? They super glued it to something and then stuck metal things into its brain? Yes. That was awesome. To control your own cockroach. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You can make a robotic, co you can make a remote control cockroach. Yeah. You can make your own. They're I, selling I the really, kits. I don't really know how I feel about that. That just seems cruel. You could buy your kit, buy a kit to make your own remote controlled cockroach at home, fo folks. Okay, so. You learned that on a previous episode of Geek Beat. Oh. It was awesome. Planes, now, trains, and automobiles. It's time for planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> First. We go to an update on the 787 Dreamliners. Is it flying? No, it's not. Oh. Okay, as you guys know, we loves us some 787. We flew on the 787 Indeed. in, in, in Japan? Japan, and it was, it was awesome. It Is was it legitimately the coolest plane? plane we've ever been in our lives. However, recently, well, not very cool. they caught on fire. Well, they didn't really catch on fire. The batteries, Had they have these lithium-ion battery packs in there. And the problem is the whole plane is like a giant computer. And I guess it overloaded the batteries and one of them caught on fire and they had to land it, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. So they've all been grounded. Globally. And they're all being, you know, tested. Globally, they've all been grounded. Exactly. But the FAA has just approved a test flight on a 787. Uh, where they're going to let them take just the crew and only essential people, get up in the air with this thing, do some maneuvers, do f flight checks and all that good stuff, and see if they can, if they've got it fixed. So, essentially, I mean, the It's the first step in getting them back in the air. Yes. Now, the people who are going on this, the crew... I'm sure have they had to sign tested, waivers, and they are completely sure that everything will be just fine. Sure, they are. 
<laughs> anyway. So they have to do that before we can test the 787. So they got to go. They got to do this test flight, and then after they do the test flight, then it'll still be weeks or months before they could even get if if the, it gets approved as a fix. It'll be a while, and this sucks because we were supposed to be going back to Japan in just a couple of weeks. On a 787. Now we have to take a 777. Oh, woe <laughs> is me. Oh, it's going to be so rough flying in business class on a 777. Triple seven. Anyway, okay. Moving on. Our next story. I don't really know how I feel about this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excuse what me. Do you, what is As it? As evidenced by the fact that I cough right in the middle of the story. <laughs> this is the W Motors hypercar. Okay. It's called the Lycan. It's pretty good looking. Yeah, that looks okay. nice. But, well, let's see if we can, you know what we have to do? We have to skip uh, to about, can you skip to about a minute and 12 seconds into the video on this one, Ken? Because I want you guys to hear what the special feature of this vehicle is. It is the first car that's being made in, in uh, the Middle East. Now, okay. listen to this. Oh, we don't have audio? Oh. Well, hang on just a second. First car in the world, and the only car in the world. Here we go. LED encrusted diamonds, a white gold piece that has diamond encrusted all around it. And the client can choose between rubies, sapphires, and emeralds to integrate inside the car, depending on the color that is chosen. The wheels are very special. So the W has 20 inch in the back and 19 inches in the front. The design of it are very modern, I see. We wanted to go with a V shape, as the V is taken in several sections of the vehicle. And this has a very special meaning for us, because the V is the number seven in Arabic. And using the number seven, we wanted to play on that to produce only seven cars in the world of the like it. The number seven is used a bit everywhere in bits and pieces of the vehicle, very uh, discreetly. So I'm gonna you see it pay. In the roof, you hang see on, it hang on. In the air blades, you see it on the plaque in the back, you see it in the rims, and you also see it in the front lights. So this plate is actually signed with a number of the vehicle from one to seven, and the date of delivery that the client received the car in. So we have one of seven, which is right here. Arabic uh, letters and Arabic uh, alphabets are beautiful, beautiful way to write, and they give it an artistic feel when you see it. So okay, so I'm gonna pay how much to get a car that's just made up of sevens? <laughs> it's not just the sevens, okay? This is why. And I'm diamonds? Saying, uh, <laughs> yes. So this is this is this is why I'm not sure if I like this car or not. First of all. <laughs> The car has street cred. If you look at it, it's a good looking car. Sure. It's a good looking car. It's got- It has diamonds. It's got twin turbo V6, uh, a flat six, I'm sorry, which is a Porsche type engine configuration. Sure. 750 horsepower, zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds, top speed of 245 miles an hour. Okay, sounds Le like a good car. Legitimate, legitimate hypercar, well, car, not just like supercar. 270. With well, a seven. Yeah. Well, actually, this is funny because the car costs, are you ready for this? $3.4 million. And they've already got orders for a hundred of them. <gasps> no. Okay. How much did you put down so, to, um, to, to. You probably pay for the whole thing in advance. I don't know. But the thing is, they set out to build the world's most expensive car. But with, and they did. Oh, but, wow. but here's the funny thing. As much as you'll pay for that car, it's not even the world's fastest car. There are at least 27 other vehicles that are technically faster. 27? 27 others that are faster, and this one costs 50% more than even the most expensive of all 27 that are faster than it. Wow. So really, you're legitimately just paying For to have diamonds and rubies and gold on your car. <laughs> wow. So, I don't know. Hey, if they're if they're buying <laughs> I'm selling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. What is your favorite what was your favorite Super Bowl commercial or the worst Super Bowl commercial that you saw or whatever you want to say about Super Bowl commercials? <laughs> Players a fame spot go to gb.tv slash fame spot. Hey folks, welcome back to Geek Beat Live. We only have three minutes to do the entire <laughs> unboxing section and say our goodbyes. It so starts now. <laughs> it begins now. All right, first of all, a uh, little card. What do we have here? We have the, oh, now this is the Jaybird. I can open this without your knife. Okay. 
This is the Jaybird. What are these called? The Jaybird headphone head buds. Oh, these, these are, some are the Secure Fit Wireless Jaybirds. Bluetooth head nice earphones. Packaging. Oh, very nice. Nice. Oh, yes. I actually like how Jaybird does their whole packaging. It's very nice unboxing. Awesome packaging. And, well, I don't think oh, we have I time to, to get them all oh, okay. out right now. Yeah, do we? we don't. We don't, but, actually. But what I really like is if you look, if, if you look in the middle here, that is actually a case. Yes, it's a hard case. That these earphones will wrap up, and so you can keep that case in your pocket. Nice. So, okay, well, I'm looking forward to this. These, these, are, com the <laughs> these are completely wireless, so I'm going to be trying those at the gym. Speaking oh. of wireless headphones, nice. okay, these are some wireless headphones. From Manhattan? From Manhattan called the, the flight. flight. Cool. Okay. Oh, like, are they meant for a flight? Like... Well, it says so they work with iOS, Android, Windows, and PlayStation 3. But no they, airplanes? They, you could yeah, use them in an airplane, does, does and an airplane? they also have a built-in microphone. So, yeah, these would be good for... Can I try them on? You can try them on, but very quickly. Quickly, quickly! quickly. <laughs> I'm scared of Dave. Now, those also fold up. Huh? They fold up! <laughs> and it looks like they come with a nice little look? case. They actually look pretty good. Yeah. They do. They look pretty good. 15 seconds. Nice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 15 seconds. It hasn't been two minutes yet. Now he's just messing with. Now he's he's learning. He's learning to tell us like a certain amount of time when he really wants yeah, like us. Yeah. Like before the show, to take... Ken told you we had five minutes when we really okay. had eight minutes. That's right. That's a good plan, actually. Okay. This one. <gasps> More headphones. Where are headphones? Today is headphone day, but yes, these is. are not just normal, not that any of these are normal headphones, but these are Crossfade M100s. Now, these are from Vmoda, so you yeah, guys I remember that was Vmoda. We, we've been using Vmodas around here for a while, and the thing about it is the Vmodas sound awesome, but they're a little big because they don't fold these down. Fold down. These are the new folding version. Look how oh, small so the case more is. More. And so, so we we always, you know, like we like to take them with us when we travel, wow. but oh, nice. Look at that. I like them. Cool. Oh, wow. Look at that. 10 seconds. GK is uh, claiming them. I don't know. They yeah. look good. So the Where's cool thing about they didn't put our well logo. the cool thing is these have these plates here and you can have them laser etched if you want. Left. Very so, cool. Uh, yeah. Plates off your others. We could probably, but they won't necessarily match. But we'll try it. We'll see. Okay, now. And then we also have from Twelve South something over here. We, we actually picked this up at MacWorld when we were in San Francisco. We did. Francisco. There's one for you. So they they. Uh, they are producing these. Um, these are like covers. They're not really cases because they're a little thinner than cases. So they're they're actually meant for people who are wanting cases, you know. Um, so they. I gotta rip this open. Well, I think we're out of time. Yeah. Well, it's okay. Here's the deal. You see, it's basically a thin you just piece of on. leather. But it sticks on your i your iPhone, and so you've got leather protection on the back. And you can and, uh, take it off and put it on and take it off and put it on all sorts of different times. Like that's right. Hundreds of times. These are brand new. You can head over to 12south.com and you can get you one to try it out. Very cool. Okay, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us each and every week. We really appreciate it. We love hanging out with you and in the chat room and online. So uh, keep uh, keep talking to us all throughout the week, and we will see you next week. Ping her on Twitter at Callie Lewis or head on over to google.com forward slash plus Callie Lewis. Or google.com google slash plus John P or add Twitter John Pose. See you guys. Have a good week. Bye.